Hi everyone. Today's video is gonna focus on bringing together several rules that we've already done and kind of making them collide. For example, we've already done the chain rule and we've already done the derivatives of the six basic trig functions. Today we're gonna merge them and show how the chain rule sometimes is needed to evaluate the derivatives of more complex trig functions. So that's what we're gonna seek out through these next five examples. So if we just start with example one, y equals sine x, we already know the derivative of this because we did it in our previous lesson. So I would just write, okay, the derivative of y with respect to x, I've memorized it, it's just the cosine of x. It's that simple. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. But what happens if we want to take the derivative of the sine of 2x? So it's not just an x anymore. Kind of like I equate this to when we were doing the power rule. Remember when we just had x to the nth power versus a function of x to the nth power? Um, we had to use the chain rule or the power rule for functions versus just the regular power rule. This is sort of the same idea. Just plain old trig isn't going to work anymore. In other words, the derivative of the sine of 2x is not just the cosine of 2x. It's not that simple. So we're going to have to use the chain rule. So if you remember what the chain rule said from a pre previous lesson, the chain rule reads as follows. The derivative of y with respect to x is given by the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. Again, you can see those du's canceling out right here and you're right back to dy dx. So with this problem, since it's more complicated, it's the sine of 2x, we are going to identify what y is equal to and what u is equal to. So what we're going to do is we're going to let u be what's in the parentheses, just like we did before with the chain rule. So we're going to let u be 2x, and then we're going to let y be the sine of that, the sine of u. Now what's great about this is we've now broken this problem down into pieces that are manageable for us because we have rules for each of these. For example, the derivative of y here with respect to u, well, the derivative of just the sine of x is cosine x, so the derivative of the sine of u, cosine u. And the derivative of u over here with respect to x is 2. So multiplying these together, my final answer, dy dx, equals dy du, so cosine of u times du dx, which is 2. And if I plug my u back in here, I've got the cosine of 2x times 2, which you know from my previous lessons, I like to bring that 2 forward to cosine of 2x. That is the derivative. Now, there's this rule that is named the outside inside rule. <coughs> it's sort of a shortcut to get from here to here without all of this work. This is why it's working, okay? But the shortcut is if you have a trig function and it's more than just an x, you're going to do it the same way you normally would. So the derivative of the sine is cosine. So sine 2x becomes cosine 2x. Right there it is but then you must remember to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is just two. So the derivative of sine of two X is cosine of two X, much like the derivative of sine X is cosine X. So you just do that part and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So it's like the outside becomes cosine, the inside becomes two, okay. Let's try the next one. Y equals the cosine of t squared plus 1, and we want the derivative. So I changed the variable on here. I changed an x to a t. So the chain rule would read like this. 
the derivative of y with respect to t would be dy du times du dt. See again, cross out those du's and you have dy dt, dy dt. So over here, we need to identify y and u. So we'll let u be t squared plus 1, which is in the parentheses, and we'll let y be the cosine of that, or the cosine of u. Okay, so the derivative of y with respect to u. Again, look how we've simplified the problem. The derivative of the cosine of x is negative sine x. So the derivative of cosine u, negative sine u. The derivative of u over here with respect to t is going to be 2t. So bringing these two over here, I have dy dt equals dy du, so negative sine of u times 2t. I'm going to plug my u back in, so negative sine of t squared plus 1 times 2t. And last but not least, I'm going to bring that 2t forward, so negative 2t sine of t squared plus 1. Now, you want to skip all this work? Look at the original. Look at the answer. Okay, let's see if we can use the outside-inside rule. So the derivative of cosine of this, okay, there it is, negative sine of this times the derivative of the inside 2t. Okay? So let's see if we can use that little shortcut on the next two examples. Take a look at number four. Let's see if we can just shortcut it. So we're going to bypass all that work and come down here. So we're going to say dy dx. Okay. So the original problem is the sine of x squared plus x. Okay. So let's do the outside first. What's the derivative of sine? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So cosine of x squared plus x. So this just comes down, outside is cosine, times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is 2x plus 1, and that's the answer. 2x plus 1 times the cosine of x squared plus x. See how easy that is? All right, let's take a look at our last one, number 5. Little bit more complicated y equals the tangent of the quantity 5 minus the sine of 2x. Okay, let's try to bypass the chain rule work here and use what the chain rule has taught us about a little shortcut here. So let's do the outside first. Okay, what's the derivative of tangent? Well, the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared x. So the derivative of the tangent of this right here is going to be the secant squared of this right here. Okay? The secant squared of u. The tangent of u becomes the secant squared of u, but now I have to take the derivative of the inside, the derivative of u, and I'll tack that over here. You can put it on the back, but I'm going to put it on the front. So the derivative of 5 minus sine 2x, well, 5 is 0 minus, now the derivative of the sine of 2x is its own little chain rule, its own little outside-inside rule. So the derivative of sine of this is cosine of this, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2. Whew, that was a lot. So to recap, the derivative of tangent of all this is secant squared of all this, times the derivative of this part inside, 0, minus cosine 2x times 2. So my final answer will read as follows, negative 2 cosine of 2x, times secant squared of 5 minus the sine of 2x. So that's a doozy, but that's how you do it. So thanks for watching.